Hi, this is Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today I am just going to talk about soldering. I'm making this video because I looked up soldering steel, soldering brake line tubing, and I could find nothing online. So I'm going to cover up what I've learned in the past year to make this a lot easier for anybody. Now in general, if you're using uh, your item for weight bearing, you cannot solder seal steel properly. However, for what we're doing in toys, this works fantastic. Uh, and let me show you. What I'm working with here is brake line tubing. And this is a uh, steel zinc coated and um, it is 3 16ths. It's also available in one quarter. To work with this stuff, you will need a straightener, a bender and a cutter and uh, I'm not going to go over brands I'm just going to list in the description everything I've got here and where to get it. If you're using brass I would recommend getting the K&S if you want to bend it. If you buy the other brands or the less expensive stuff it will snap if you bend it. It is very brittle. This stuff is very bendable. Now, before working with any metal, make sure you clean it with isopropyl alcohol, not rubbing alcohol. You want the full 100% and scrub all your metal with that before you solder it. Now, you'll need a surface to work on. And in this case, this silicon surface is fantastic. And these little guys here are magnetic, highly recommended. To hold your pieces in place, I use mainly Play-Doh and this stuff works great. Uh, you can get some helping hands, but you have to make sure they're the heavy duty ones. And this will actually screw to your table because it will tip, but these are very good. I also will use pliers, of different sizes, but make sure they have heat resistant handles. Some other tools you may find useful are clamps like this. Make sure they have these uh, rubber on the end so you don't burn yourself. Now, most importantly for your soldering iron, most soldering irons will not work. You will need something with a wide tip. And this is a screwdriver tip that's one centimeter wide. And you will need one that is good for stained glass, not electronics. And this Weller works great as does, uh, and it's inexpensive. You can also use an American Beauty, but they're much more expensive. Again, I will list which one this is below. And you can see from here that this is an goes to 880 degrees Fahrenheit and is 80 watt soldering iron. And I thought I'd just bring out a couple of the items that I am soldering and this is the kind of stuff that I am making. And you can see it is quite solid and this stuff works very well. Now you will need flux and a little paintbrush to apply it. And I recommend this one. This one has worked well for me. And it is not an electronics uh, flux, it is for other. And I think the second most important thing next to your soldering iron is your solder. Now I worked for the long time using just regular solder. I used 6040 and 6337. They worked, but I went through a lot of it. Wasn't very happy with it. So I finally decided to buy some Kester and the difference is incredible. And this is a 6337. And what that means is that it will set up quicker than the 6040. It doesn't have as much setting time. And I know there's technical words for this, but I wanna be really straightforward. And the other thing is has an aggressive resin, rosin, and it's a 2.2%. Uh, I've found that that works excellent. And I like the 1.5 millimeter width. I find the thinner is too thin and the thicker just leaves too many lumps. But this stuff is excellent. You should have a little pokey stick to move stuff around. And the other thing you need is a cleaner to clean your tip. Now you'd clean the tip before you start and you clean it between times and you clean it at the end. And after you clean it, you just put a little bit of solder on the tip. Now we're ready to get going. Now in my other videos, you can see me work, but let's just see some really simple examples. When I work, I like to hold stuff in place. So in this example, I'm just putting down the Play-Doh on top. And as you can see, you can get really close to that. When you're working, you must flux everything. So every time you work, you put a little bit of flux on that. And if you work on it and you have to do it again, you're going to need to add more flux. 
Now, when you're, when you're soldering, what you need to know is that the solder will travel into the area of heat. The heat will pull away the solder. So I am sticking my iron right at the join to heat things up. Then I could just apply, well, the solder that was on the tip already has already soldered it. It was that easy. Now, I have not let this cool and I'm already touching this. This is real time. I can flip it over. And if I wanted, I could solder the other side. Again, I would just touch it. Now, if I touch that, it will actually break apart. So you have to be really careful when you're doing another side. The heat will change the solder. It will actually melt the solder inside there and pull it away. So you have to be careful when you're doing the other side not to let the piece break away. So you'd still need to hold it down. So let's say I want to join something like this holding up. Now I could use the helping hands or I could use something like this to hold it into place if I don't have helping hands. So let me show you how to do that. First you apply flux in the areas that you want to solder. You're going to have your solder nearby. So I have my roll here and a little piece sticking out. Then I am going to hold that with pliers, heat up the area. But it doesn't take a lot. Then I'm going to go grab some solder and hold it there. And the heat should pull the solder right into the join. Then you're going to have to hold it for a few seconds to let it cool enough to hold it. And that's all you need to do. Now, I didn't hold that upright enough because I'm talking, but I've just, just fixed that. So to fix it, I can hold on to it, hold the heat till it melts it. Still try to hold on. See, there's solder there and the heat will pull the solder towards it so that there we go and that's all it took i want to add a little bit more i just oops a little too much there i put a little bit more paste on there and then i can just pick up some solder and let that fall in place that's it oops that one fell see how that fell that's from not holding it now if i held it while i did that that would not have happened. Now, one of the things you need to do is get creative. Here is another way of supporting this kind of piece. So the, you can use the Play-Doh for all sorts of support, and this will give you even better than trying to hold it up with the pliers. Now you can see that steel is there to stay, but when you're adding a different metal, such as brass, now brass solders much quicker. So when you're heating up the metals, you want to put the heat onto the steel more than you put it onto the copper because you need to heat this up more than you need to heat that up. And here is how I would hold this piece in place. So you apply your flux as always to both sides and then you're gonna put the heat on the steel right inside, just getting the solder ready, right inside the join and heat that up and then just drop a little solder in and you're done. So once you are done your piece, and yes, this is something super simple, what you're going to do is take it to the sink and scrub it with a dish soap and a toothpaste when it's clean. Once it's dry, prime it and make sure it's a metal primer. And I use the anti rust one. Make sure you shake this for a good minute because otherwise it tends to stay tacky. If it's well shaken, it will dry better and make sure it dries at least overnight. Once the primer's set, you can then paint it. Now, one of the things you gotta make sure when you're finished, make sure you clean and solder your machine. Also, because there's lead in this, and I mean, it's not really dangerous, but make sure you wash your hands before you start or half, and after you finish. And there is a simple structure that is a racing sulky, and this little piece we made actually just holds up the shafts. So if you have any questions, uh, leave some comments below. I uh, appreciate it if you like, subscribe, and uh, 
if you can check out these videos, you can see how I actually work to make things with this uh, brake line tubing and steel, like the ones I just showed you before. Thanks for joining me.